How is Mosaic ML worth $1.3 billion? What is the core business? Between Databricks acquisition and Snowflake's NVIDIA and Reka partnerships, what's going on in the enterprise generative AI world? As you may have already heard, Databricks recently announced its acquisition of a large language model company, Mosaic ML, for $1.3 billion. This is by far the biggest acquisition in the generative AI world. The craziest thing is this startup is only two years old with only 62 employees. So it's virtually $21 million per employee. This is just insane. I bet the two founders are really, really happy. This is the CEO and co-founder of Mosaic ML. He started his first startup in 2024 called Nirvana Systems. It provides a open source deep learning framework called Leon and also a full stack SaaS platform for deep learning models. After also two years, he sold his company to Intel for $400 million. So it's not the first time he started a company for two years and get acquired somewhere else. This is a really nice track record. So then he went to Intel working for three years there before he started Mosaic ML. The other co-founder, he also worked at Nirvana as a senior engineer for eight months. And then he also went to Intel. He worked there for four years or joined Mosaic ML. So what exactly does Mosaic ML offer and how is it worth $1.3 billion? It basically offers three things. First of all, it has open source models. It's a series of models called MPT models. It launched the first model MPT-7B in May, just a month ago. And just a few days ago, which is five days ago, it launched MPT-30B, which is an updated model for advanced features. There are several things to note here. First of all, it's a complete open source model licensed for commercial use, which means that you can use it for any of your enterprise use cases and you don't need to worry about license issues. There are several other open source models that's actually semi open source, not really open source like Llama, Apaka, Koala. They are all semi open source models, not okay for commercial use. And this model is completely okay, partly because when it was training, it wasn't using any of the GPT generated data like some of the other models do. Another thing to note is that the context window is really nice. It comes with a 8,000 token context window and even supports longer context window. It's also very sufficient and performant. You can even deploy it to a single GPU. The second feature is Mosaic training. You can train your own large language models and other generative AI models with full control of your data in your secure environment. This is great for companies with data security concerns. They don't want to send their data to ChatGPT or other model providers. They want to store their data on their own server, train their data on their own server. The data is actually never stored on the Mosaic ML system. It also provides a special CLI tool where you can scale your GPU resources to different sizes without thinking about the infrastructure. For example, in this example, you can just define the number of GPUs you want and it will automatically scale up for you. And also it will automatically find ways to speed up the process so that you can save some money and time. The third feature they provide is Mosaic Inference. You can use their API endpoints at a cheaper price. It's four times cheaper than OpenAI APIs. It also has enterprise solutions, again, to deploy any model, customize your model, fine tuning your data with cheaper cost. So in general, I feel like the $1.3 billion is buying a way for customers to use their own proprietary data to build large language models and applications in their own secure environment at a cheaper price. And also from this Databricks blog post, apparently Mosaic ML has already gotten quite a few customers for a variety of generative AI use cases. Still, is it worth that much money though? Doesn't Databricks has its own large language model dollar? Is it because Dolly is not as good as advertised? Or is it because it's too hard to build the infrastructure to train a large language model like Dolly for enterprises? 
Or is it a marketing strategy to have Databricks be in the front center of the generative AI space? Is it going to help them with the IPO process somehow? I guess the $1.3 billion is in stock, so maybe it's actually not worth that much. For those of you who are not familiar with Databricks, it was founded in 2013 by a group of UC Berkeley researchers. It is still a private company. In 2021, it raised $1.6 billion Series H at 38 billion valuation. According to this Wall Street Journal article, last year Databricks reported more than $1 billion in annual revenue. This $1.3 billion deal is larger than its annual revenue. So what does Databricks do? It's a cloud database. So it's a cloud database analytics platform. Customers send all their data to Databricks and store all their data there, and, and they can query their data, build applications, dashboards, even ETL pipelines on the Databricks platform. Databricks would have all the customers' data. So now Databricks has Mosaic. It would take all the customer data directly from uh, Databricks and start analyzing their data or building models specifically towards a specific database or specific company. So the data and insights will always stay here at Databricks and never need to leave this platform. But then I just feel like isn't everyone else doing this, trying to do this or already doing this? Funny thing is that this week, Databricks is having their annual conference called the Data and AI Summit. And one of its biggest competitor, Snowflake, is having the Snowflake Summit happening exactly at the same time. Wow. Quite a coincidence. One of the biggest news from the Snowflake Summit is the Snowflake NVIDIA partnership, helping businesses harness their data for generative AI in the data cloud. As you can see, they're doing exactly the same thing. Let businesses securely build custom large language models using their own proprietary data in the Snowflake data cloud. Snowflake is going to use the NVIDIA Mano platform. It's a cloud native enterprise platform for building, customizing, and deploying generative AI models with billions of parameters. This is quite exciting because NVIDIA is one of the leading AI companies with all the GPU resources. Now Snowflake not only has access to NVIDIA's platform to build large language models, train large language models, but also have access to all the computing resources that NVIDIA could offer. And, and another exciting news happened today, actually maybe yesterday because I'm recording it tonight and you're probably watching it tomorrow morning, is that Snowflake announced their investment in partnership with Reka, yet another builder of generative models for the enterprise. Yeah, as you can see, a lot of people, a lot of players are in the field. This company, Reka, I didn't think much of it until I saw this news <laughs> published. Also today, yesterday, if you're watching, Reka is founded by a team of researchers from Deep Learning, Google, Baidu, and Meta with $58 million funding. Its first commercial model, Yasa, is a multimodal AI system trained to not only understanding words and phrases, but also images, videos, tabular data. This might be the biggest selling point. For now, I guess it's easy to derive insights from companies' internal data since a lot of internal data are not text data. So this could be super useful. In addition, this blog post mentioned several other companies that are also chasing after models for better suited for enterprise use cases, such as Writer, Contextual AI, Llama Index, and Cohere. As you can see, this space is really new but already filling up. So anyways, I'm looking forward to see the progress of Databricks and Snowflake with their super exciting AI partnerships. I am really excited to see what's happening next. And also, I'm really curious about what are other enterprise solutions if there will be any open source solutions for enterprises. Please let me know if you have your eyes on other enterprise solutions. I would love to get to know them and see how that compares with others. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.